By now you've read all there is to know about Nissan's incredible GTR. You can recite its horsepower and torque numbers in your sleep. You can talk at length about its various graphs and programmable gauges, and of course you can call out its ridiculous performance specs. 0 to 60 in less than 4 seconds and a quarter mile time in the 11s. Of course, there's also over 1G of cornering grip. But what you really want to know is what's it like to drive. Some have reported that the GTR is simply a numbers crushing machine that lacks real character. A sort of great white shark. Highly efficient yet completely cold and soulless. You can find evidence for this argument in its various automated systems. Its gearbox doesn't need suggestions on shift points by the driver. Its stability control system knows better than you which way you should be going, and its all-wheel drive system apportions power as it sees fit. The Atessa ETS all-wheel drive system normally splits torque with a huge rear drive bias, sending only 2% drive to the front. And although it can send up to 50% forward, the GTR feels like a rear drive car 99% of the time. There are only two situations where you really feel drive going forward, and those are of course in a launch start, where the front tires are clawing away at the pavement as the rear spin for a second and then dig in and launch the car forward. And the second situation is when you're coming out of a corner on a racetrack after you've rotated the car into the corner and picked up the throttle on the way out. It is simply incredible and has to be experienced to be believed. It's also a little bit addictive. It's also very digital in its efficiency, feeling as if PlayStation and reality have somehow merged. It's easy to see how some could accuse the car of being soulless. It just feels as if it could do what it's doing even if you weren't along for the ride. Its various systems are constantly providing a huge safety net just in case you run out of road and talent at the same time. And while it's hard to argue that's a bad thing, it does take a big dose of driver involvement out of the equation. Mistakes are easily forgiven and covered up. So much so that you'd worry about a GTR driver stepping into any high-powered car with a less sophisticated drivetrain like an overbearing parent who keeps their toddler from falling while trying to take his or her first steps, the GTR is perhaps too vigilant of its driver. But given the car's devastating ability to eat asphalt, that may be a very good thing. The argument about the GTR's character deficiency continues to gain momentum with its engine. The 3.8 liter V6 has two turbochargers strapped to it, of course. And by now, I know you know all the numbers, 480 horsepower, 434 pound-feet of torque but the important bit is how usable it all is. You see, the turbochargers are mounted further upstream than in most turbocharged cars, and so they spool up more quickly. The result, of course, is less turbo lag. The power delivery is so smooth and boost comes on so quickly that the GTR's engine feels less like a manic turbo motor and much more like a larger displacement, normally aspirated engine. And while there's clearly no shortage of power at all, the smooth delivery combined with the engine's muted sounds makes it feel slightly less than special, something that can never be said of the brakes. As far as the braking is concerned, there are two words that sum it up perfectly. Amazing. The front and rear rotors are both a massive 15 inches in diameter, and the front calipers in particular are just ridiculous, looking as if they just came from the Nürburgring, which of course they did. So enough said about the braking then. So what are we to think of the supercar humbling Nissan GTR? Firstly, there's no denying Nissan's amazing achievement. The GTR's performance and engineering signifies a paradigm shift of the highest order. Every company building high performance cars will need to reset the bar. That being said, the GTR is a paradox in that it is better and worse. The better part of course is that any driver can go more quickly in this car thanks to its various computer controlled systems. The worst part is that the driver will learn little and feel less involved in the experience. Cold, calculating, and efficient, yes. But wow, is it effective. I'm Emil Bure, On Cars. For additional episodes on this car and more, visit OnCars.com.